On this episode of the Star Trek Universe podcast, we are talking about Star Trek Picard, episode 10. <laughs> True. <laughs> Sorry, the season, yeah, season finale <laughs> of Star Season one, Star Trek one. What is, what's, what, uh. you're broken. We're doing episode 10 of season one of Star Trek Picard, everybody, in et in Arcadia Ego part two. Right after this ad, we have no control over. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I screwed up too, but it was the Latin. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Star Trek Universe Podcast. My name's Matthew Carroll. I'm David C. Robertson. How you doing, buddy? Oh man, I don't know what I don't know how I'm doing, man. I'm I'm coping with this finale. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, there's a lot to cope with. Um, I there's no, I'm, I found myself again, uh, talking about this and the way I've talked about many things. There's nothing in this finale I don't like. Uh huh. But I don't particularly like this epi- as an episode. Uh huh. Uh, and mostly because I feel like it's super cluttered. Yeah, they were trying to get done with some stuff. Yeah, and they tried to do a <laughs> whole lot in, whatever, 56 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I felt like certain storylines and certain characters got short-shifted because of that. I absolutely agree. And I think I think it was totally uh, back-heavy. They should have proportioned more of this th- evenly throughout the... Uh, Throughout the season, in my opinion. Yeah, totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. And and there's some things they just... I, I guess Brent Spiner just wanted out. I, 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 is the only thing I can imagine. At least one well, never... To, yeah. Or, or, or they just didn't want him to ever have to put the makeup on again. You know? Yeah. I think that's probably yeah. it. Um. Yeah. I think... We, we can go ahead and get into that. I... I struggle because for me, as a Star Trek fan, I remember the episode where we find out that his mother is an android Um, or specifically that there is an android, a replica of his mother who doesn't realize she's an android. Right. And Jordy tells whoever she has an aging chip, just like data. Now, they've ignored that roundly throughout the rest of the series. Sure. I, they've always acted like he's just, he doesn't age. Um, well, and in this in this scenario, he hasn't had a body. And, and it, they even make a comment about Picard. And they say, are you in the clothes that you died in? So I assume he looks like he did when he died. Or at least they're, that's what they're attempting to make him look like he did when he died. He, that's what they were going for. I think they somewhat failed. Like, he looked sure. pretty rough. He looked really times. bad. He looked really bad. Like, he just didn't look anything like Data. Um, mm-hmm. He looked like his his wig was really bad. And, I, I, you know, I just don't... I don't even care about that so much as... It's okay for you to care. It really is. Like... Oh, I know. It doesn't mean it you're is. a spoiled, entitled fan. Like, that okay. hairline was way too low. I think it he looked didn't bad. didn't have that... But that's yeah, not what absolutely I... Did. That's not what I care about, though. The stuff that really bothers me is the character stuff, which... So this is the first time we've seen Data on this show. Uh-huh. We've seen visions of Data in um, Picard's head, but we haven't actually seen Data until now. And right. I, I, I'm really saddened by the little bit of character that we got. We basically just got, he's been in this world that I guess he's so bored, he's ready to die. Like, I, I know that's not exactly what he was saying. It's not what he said. He said it was because... Uh, it, it being finite is what gives life meaning, which I think is a beautiful sentiment, and it's something that Star Trek has dealt with before in generations. Like I really, mm-hmm. I love that sentiment, but um, I like that's a reason to give yourself an expiration date. It's not a reason to die in that moment. You know what I mean? I'm I'm torn about the data thing because, um, I thought like the whole reason for data dying in the first place was because Brent Spiner. And everyone involved understood, like, had just got it in their heads, like, Data doesn't age, so for him to keep playing this character is stupid, and he's got to, like, he's he's got to leave. 
And I'm like, you guys wrote in a reason already. Why are you doing this? So it will always be an issue to me that he can't be data anymore because of that. I think I've, I will always think it's stupid, but um, I like that he decides that he wants to die because it's a part of the, it's a part of the experience and it's a part of being human. And it, it was what, I mean, that, yeah, that's all nice, but the problem with it is like, why why are we bringing Picard back? <laughs> right. Or why? Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Like I, it doesn't make sense. I just like, if you're going to kill him off in that way, where his, mm-hmm. his he's not even sacrificing himself. He's just deciding to die, which like is its own sort of um, meditation on what life means. And I'm fine with that. But here's my biggest problem. We have had a 10 minute discussion about data and oh. data was nowhere in this season until now. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish they had given that time to characters that they dealt with this season and if they're going to give me data, like, give me more data. Like, if they should have maybe have two golems, because you you wrote the golem, you could have written two golems. It could have been <sighs> one for Maddox and one for uh, Sung, and then uh, and they could have downloaded Picard and Data, but then given Data a new body or something. You know, a, a different look. I, I would have been fine with something like that. Like, But it just se- seemed like bringing the character of Data in just, to sad, not even, sacrifice isn't the word. Just to die, just to die. <laughs> yeah, he already did that. <laughs> it seems like Data's Data's skills and Data's abilities could have served the universe for longer. And Data would, let's face it, he would get to die at some point again anyway. Sure. Um. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense, and it doesn't. It doesn't feel good. Like, especially considering the fact that these androids that we have now, uh, they age, uh, they eat, they drink, they're fine. They're, you know, they experience things like he could actually become as human as he could possibly be yeah. if they brought him back in golem form. And also, by the way, this more, one of the stupidest things to me is that they had this this uh, this device that fi- magically fixes a ship. And I was certain certain that they were going to go the route of Gerardi going like, Oh shit, that thing fixes things. All I have to do is have the imagination beam up, grab the thing and like stick it to Picard's head and fix his stupid head. Yeah. I, um, I, I don't like that idea. I know, I know I, you talked about it last week. I think it's, it, it's a fine thing to think you could do, but it just feels a little too doctor who for me. It feels as doctor who to me as, is him like coming oh, yeah. back in the form of a stupid golem? Well, they like, also they also <laughs> straight up provided us a, a sonic screwdriver. Now, like this, this is <laughs> yep. This felt <laughs> that that whole thing felt very Doctor Who, like the whole device. But having it work on a human would feel a, a step too far, especially when they they've already said that there's no medical device in existence that can fix him, and no treatment for what he has. Mm-hmm. Even with all of the Federation's resources, but this meta, this device that fixes ships just happens to fix his head. Like the, I would, I would not like that. I think I would really get kind of. I, I, I know there'd be a lot of fans that would be in an uproar about it, but I think I might be one of them, and I'm not even oh, one to uproar. I, yeah, I think I, I feel as negative about it as about that notion as I do about him just being a robot now. He's just an android now. Um. I, I know. I don't yeah. really like. We scanned your memories and stuck your shit and said, "No, that's stupid." That's I just, just don't stupid. understand why they did it. <laughs> like, I, I really don't understand why he's an android now, especially since Look. they made it clear that he's not going to have any more years of age. He uh-huh. doesn't have any superpowers. Like, right. if you're gonna make him an android, make him an android. Like, let's have Android Picard with super strength and super speed and fast intelligence and stuff. Like, I don't. <laughs> Why make him an android in name only? I don't understand that at all. I because I think Picard. I, I do agree with that. I think Picard would be would feel like it was somehow uh, it somehow betrayed the truth of his existence. You know, but what do you uh, mean? 
being an android would betray the truth of his existence? Well, I do think that's true to some degree, but I think that if he, suddenly he was like augmented out the wazoo and he was he was you know uh, he had greater capabilities than than a normal human being that he would shudder at that idea. Um, sure, I, I think that's true, but I, I feel like putting limitations on it, like that having those abilities just highlights the fact that you're an android and and mm-hmm. and, and, and acting like you don't have those abilities like it, is because it, so apparently the golem could have superpowers is it the way they they just like designed they just made decisions to make him not have superpowers and not live extra long and like it's kind of a waste of a golem honestly he's like an old old man and we're all kind of assuming this is going to be a three-year show uh now we don't know it could go 20 whatever but like Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick Stewart's an older guy and like they're probably not going to want this show to on forever like why not just leave him a human and do something else with the golem or why introduce the golem at all like it I just I I, I find this I find this episode like I feel like any of these story points the data thing the Picard mm-hmm. thing um Seven of Nine and Raffi thing. Um, Did that was so forced. I felt so bad for the character of Seven of Nine because not only was she like shoved into a quick relationship in the last episode of Voyager with Chakotay, now she, without any warning, she's shoved into a relationship with Raffi. It makes no damn sense. It's just so stupid. Yep. <laughs> it kind of is. And I don't care. And let, let's let us be clear. We do not care that they're lesbians. That's fine. No, I mean, you know, I, I, who cares? But right, exactly. I, I just want to make that clear because I feel like is, people when you when you when you push back at a, at a uh, LGBTQ relationship, and then you get that you get that people assume that's why, and I don't that doesn't care at all. I just care that like I mean, we got a hint that she had been in a relationship with v- v- Bajazel in that um, yeah. other episode. And that, absolutely. so like, I think that's probably, we had the hints of her having same sex feelings. Um, of course, she, we know she's with Chakoti, so I guess she is bisexual or something. Do you, do you just call him Chakoti? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Chakote. Chakoti. Uh, that, 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 that was her pet name for him. Oh, Wally Chakoti. Oh, man. <laughs> um,. <laughs> Uh, or maybe she just hadn't found herself yet. She's still figuring herself out. And maybe she, now she knows she likes ladies. And, I, I, you know, I think her and Raffi, yeah, I think they could have an interesting relationship. But, like, I I said it two episodes, or last week, that I was really glad that Gerardi and Rios didn't kiss in that moment mm-hmm. when he when she t- he touches her face or whatever. And it was like, it was just enough intimacy without crossing a line for being too soon. Cause I know they had sex a couple episodes ago, but it's not like, yeah, it, it just, they don't have a relationship. And so in these moments of, uh, they, they got, they had sex out of, uh, horniness. It seemed horniness mm-hmm. and, and, and seeking distraction. It didn't seem like they had forged any kind of romantic bond. And I could see after they've gone through this, maybe they've gotten there. And so at the end of the season, they kiss like, that's fine with me. But then, like, yeah. to jump down the stairs and just like, well, let's throw everyone in a relationship. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I, I hate that I kind of hate this episode because I, yeah, oh, there's, there's, there's chunks. I feel like almost any of these plot lines could have been good if they had been more fleshed out, but they rushed to do a whole lot of stuff in this episode. So none of it is landing for me. Yeah, like I wanted to I wanted revelations about what those synth creatures were. I I oh, I wanted too. so much revelations about the Borg or the Romulans or something. Uh and then we just see like snaky AI things coming out of a hole for like a second. I wanted to see the Romulans in the Federation fight. I oh. I know. Yeah. Mm. I would have loved to see that fight. Of course, that would have led to war, which we would have had to deal with next season or something. I don't know. Maybe not. Ah, the Romulans could have swept that under the under the rug and been like, well, it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> and the Federation's not going to keep going. It's just going to say, nope, you, you warred. But I do you feel... Warred. I also 
kind of feel like we're back to square one with the Federation Romulan um, relationship. Also, yeah. it was never justified why the Jat Vash. Uh, like we know the we know why the Jat Vash destroyed um, Mar had the Mars uh, created the Mars attack or whatever. But like mm-hmm. it just feels like they could have done anything else with the sense to cause the ban rather than the one thing that caused their culture to be lost or like tons of their people to die. Mm-hmm. They never explained why that was their only option of, of a possible like attack to cause the synth ban. Yeah. That's so that that's kind of a flaw in the season. And, and yeah, I really did want to know what, what was deal with these, uh, this federation of AI out there. I like, I was expecting kind of a classic Star Trek moment where, um, you know, uh, the a, uh, like maybe Soji has to stand up for organic life or, um, Picard has to convince the, uh, th- this, this alliance of AI that there's some organic life is worth it. You know, classic Star Trek tropes that like, if done well, could have been fun and interesting, um, and, and like impassioned and instead it, ju- they used like techno babble to create a bunch of extra ships, mm-hmm. which I didn't really understand because the ships were doing different things. Like, I think they, they, they basically explained it like it was just a bunch of mirrors of their ship, but then they all did different things at different times. So that kind of oh. didn't, I don't know. Well, they, they were kind of, they were already like using, I mean, you know about the Picard maneuver from the next generation. Yeah. Yeah, Stargazer yeah. and all that. They were just know. expounding on that. Right. Yeah, they used a bunch of techno babble, but I don't necessarily fault them for techno babble because eh. No, yeah. I I'm fine with it. I just don't I don't really like when techno babble is the thing that the entire story hinges on, which it's not. It, it, I mean, it is. There, there's a, a magic screwdriver that fixes a ship, you know. Well, but that's that's uh, plot points. That's plot points. The, the thing that matters is the characters make decisions with stakes and consequences that affect the story. And that's what Picard did. He went out there and his, his willing to die so that he could show Soji what organic li- like the meaning of life is that, that we save each other, that we need each other and that we're supposed to rely on each other. Like, Mm -hmm. and that that's the meat of this episode. And that's the other thing. That's the meat of this episode. That is what this, this episode's supposed to be about. That's what the story that where we've been watching for entire season is wrapping up with Picard showing Soji that, uh, organic life, can show mercy and that as the children that they are, they need to learn that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I didn't see Soji this episode. I know she was on screen, but she's just like typing on a computer the entire time and like working on building that spire and like very little character development happens for Soji. Agreed. I feel like, and that should have been the heart of this episode is Soji struggling with her decision of whether to close that portal or not. That's what this whole thing is about. And I don't feel like I got any time with Soji. Instead, we got a bunch of time uh, with characters that I, I don't know, that like flesh, like throwing new storylines at us and fleshing out things that didn't need to be fleshed out and throwing people into relationships and, um, I, I really enjoyed the Rios and Seven conversation, but I was like, I would rather have spent this five minutes learning about Soji's decision making process. I don't know. Yeah. Or, you know, they could have, you know, instead of had Rios and Seven, they could have had Raffi and Seven talking. Absolutely. My wife was like, did she ever meet Raffi? Like, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, she did. I'm sure, she did. she did. Yeah, she did. She had she to. Took have, them to she took them to Cloud Cloud City or whatever. Yeah, I mean, but it's, I don't remember like a conversation for real. Like, no, I don't either. I don't remember I don't them know. interacting. <laughs> and it, just, it like there's a lot wrong with this episode, and like I didn't mind it as much until we started talking about it, and I'm realizing how many things I really don't like. Yeah, it, it's it's cluttered. That's the that's like the the headline of this is that this episode is super cluttered, 
and they could have spaced a lot of this stuff out. Like you said, they could have had that conversation be between Rafi. Like, I think they're trying to build a relationship between Rios and Seven for other reasons so they can be friends, which I, I like. I liked them together. They were, they were fun. Uh, and they're both just sexy beasts. I was like, hmm. Sure. There's some sexiness on the screen right now. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think being cluttered is the primary problem here in this episode. Like it could be a damn Christopher Nolan film for all I care. I think the problem is, is for an entire season to be leading up to this episode, it's anticlimactic as hell. Like mm-hmm. you can't do a next generation ending for a Deep Space Nine season. If that hmm. makes any sense. See, I don't I feel, feel like that's, that's what, what they, they did. did. I, I don't feel that way at all. I feel that I think the exact opposite. I feel like big. So a next generation ending would have been what I was talking about, where it's like you have, you have a, a, a final single thing you have to do. You know what I mean? Where you like, you have to talk the alien force down or you have to convince the Android not to end all like all organic life or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was like, it, it built this big season to this, to this single point point. And then instead of focusing on that single point that has been the, the entire purpose, it threw 30 different plot lines at us or like whatever. It just, it threw a lot. And then for some reason, this kind of just pissed me off from like a storyteller's perspective. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like the, the crew is on the ship. They're on the La Serena. Is that right? To say that right? Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> they're on the ship. Elnor, Narek. Soji and Picard are on the ship and Mm -hmm. Gerardi and Picard are at the Android camp Mm -hmm. and then they go to the camp. Everyone in the ship goes to the camp to, to destroy the spire and it's like this. I was like, okay, now we're get we're getting to the f- end game here. They're all going to coalesce into one place where we have to have that big showdown between, you know, Soji, uh, Sutra, uh, this alien force, uh, Soong. These are they all have to come to the same place so we can have you know have that big moment, right? Mm-hmm. And then Picard and Gerardi leave and go to the ship. Yeah. I was like, they didn't even like they they were they literally just swapped places. It was the weirdest uh-huh. storytelling thing I've ever seen. Um it, it, they didn't even like shuffle the people around. A lot of times when they do that sort of thing where like the sh- some of the people from the ship go to the, the planet and some of the people from the planet come to the ship, it's because they want different characters to interact with each other. They didn't even do that. They just had the two parties, one leave the ship and come to the planet, and one leave the planet and go to the ship, and just mm-hmm. miss each other completely and never interact. Right. I don't know, man. I, I'm i I'm talking myself into a fury about this episode. Right. Now, what, <laughs> what I meant, though, about a TNG ending uh, to a DS9 season is TNG was just awful. Awful about setting up something really cool and then just never paying it off. Like they set up uh, those aliens and conspiracy never paid it off. Even though they played like a whole thing at the end about like, Oh, the signals out there is still going. Um, And I know that those were supposed to be, those are like, you know, beginnings of the Borg as far as the storytellers were concerned. And then they just wound up dropping that and made it the Borg. Right. Um, But those aliens are still out there somewhere and they infiltrated the entire damn federation. Uh, or Starfleet at the very least. So we have that. We have like, you know, Guinan being an imp, like her secret past with Q. Like there was all these little things right. in Next Generation that just were hinted at of the preservers, never got paid off. I, I agree that that's a flaw of TNG. I don't know that it's a flaw here. Like what, what did they leave on the table here that we're not getting answered? I, I don't know that we got anything that's like unanswered. And it's also not the end. It's just the it's the end of season yeah. one, you know? I'm not. I'm not saying it's completely unanswered. It's uh, it's just anticlimactic. It's like, you know, we we were given like they definitely they they definitely acted like it was a J.J. Abrams show with a lot of mystery boxes that just had like no nothing of an interesting resolution. Hmm. Like, what did the Romulans have to do with the Borg? Why do they hate the sense? Like, why do we well, have you know? I do think I, I do think they answered most of that. I I, I, yeah, I think they, they just and I, I actually liked most of the answers. Um, 
I really love the answer about the admonition. I really mm-hmm. loved everything about the season pretty much up until episode nine. Um, I like the admonition as an answer, like the reason it drives you crazy and the reason the Romulans are so dead set on killing the AI is partially because they don't, it wasn't a message meant for them and they don't understand it. But also it makes sense. The parts they do understand make sense why they'd want to destroy AI because AI, as soon as it develops, has the power to destroy all organic life, which is, right. you know, that, that, that like makes all of that makes total sense. And the Borg thing even makes sense that the Romulans didn't have anything to do with the origin of the Borg, but they did have something to do with the origin of the artifact, which is all that they mm-hmm. really claim to in the season. Like Ramda, when she got assimilated, the admonition got uploaded into the Borg cube. And so because the admonition was working like a virus, they had to shut down the Borg cube. Mm -hmm. So like all of that's fine. It answered all those questions. Here's my problem. I am an entitled fan. (laughs) This is some entitled fan shit because here's, here's the the real issue. The, the (laughs) was at the root of the problem is that our listeners wrote in and had theories way better than anything they wrote. Right. Me and you had theories way better than anything they wrote. <laughs> yeah. There, there were and, there were some things they set up that the, the thing the thing that I hate that they never touched on is the holograms being AI. Like I want to know why the holograms aren't sentient and why you know, we're not you know, we even have an established in universe thing where a hologram doctor that worked with seven wrote a hollow mm-hmm. novel called photons be free. I'm just like, this all leads me to believe the holograms are going to have something to do with all this. And they did not. Right. They're yeah. just servants on the ship. Yeah. We should have had, you know, uh, friggin', uh, the doctor is guy Fox, man. Like, can, that's uh, what you need. Can you draw uh, us a star Trek, um, a star Trek, uh, Universe podcast T-shirt that just says "Photons be free," <laughs> <laughs> and it has like all the has all the different Rioses on it. <laughs> it's gonna, uh, yeah, it could have like all the different Rioses. The Doctor, it could have uh, freaking Moriarty from TNG. Yeah, it could have, it have that little uh, that little. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All of all the various holograms who like tried to break free on uh it could have a uh, vic fontaine um oh yeah it could just yeah. have that one sad jumpsuited uh librarian uh or whatever mm-hmm. she was or the, the the lady who worked at the storage unit <laughs> right it'd be super cool if i could do that i love that idea uh, i probably can't do that <laughs> that's cool we'll, we'll, we'll see if, if we can pull it together we'll uh we'll see if we can pull something together uh I'll, I'll um, I, I'm I'm not as good at images as you are. I was like, I can import all those images and desaturate them and make them look kind of funny. Um, ugh. you know that, that, but there's, you know, there's the, uh, because they rescinded their license uh, their or participation like with the, yeah, with the fan art licensing project over on T public. So yeah, well, uh, I think, I think, Bumble, so I don't know. And that's why I think if you, if you actually drew those pictures, I think you might get away with it, especially if they look nondescript enough, if you drew yeah. them and then photo, I doubt they have a copyright on photons be free. They probably, know, they probably don't have a copyright on that. Um, anyway, uh, especially if we didn't do it through T pub, like we like, you know, gave them away or something. Anyway, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, it let us know if you want a photons be free shirt, you let us know. And we'll, we'll, if we get a, if we get like 10 people that say they'll buy a photons be free shirt for 20 bucks, I'll order a case. Um, <laughs> um, Stop it, volunteering me for work. I'm just, I, I think you'd be cool order. Like if, if I put the bill for order in the case, if you, you'd, you'd draw it right. I don't know, man. That seems that's like a lot of work. All right. We'll talk. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how the how every all the all the fans are clamoring for them. Um, yeah, I couldn't even give away those DS Nine posters, <laughs> those DS Nine documentary posters. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this: uh, not that uh, the, I, I I liked it, um, but I I see, I see I, it's not like it's from Star Trek. It's from a Star Trek documentary. I don't know. I guess I yeah. see. I see why people would be like, eh, whatever. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I've got like 30 of them. If any of you guys want any, yeah, um, let me know. It's rad. Um, all right. What have we not touched on? I, I know we're just kind of a scatter shot. Uh, Will, Will Riker in command. Yeah. That's too bad. He didn't get to really do anything, but threaten. I would have loved. Oh God. I wanted to see that fight. Yeah, I wanted to see that fight, too. I wanted to see him be able to do stuff. I do like the fact that he's in command and could show up again uh, or even have his own show. I, he looked... I know he has back problems. Mm-hmm. He looked really uncomfortable. Did you see that? Um, I did not feel like he looked uncomfortable. I felt like he looked relaxed. Hmm. My wife yeah. even commented on that, how like he was just like giving off this like posture of like how he was like kind of just slumped like, all right, mofos, I got the biggest, baddest shit in the fleet. Yeah. And like 10 of those behind me. I definitely think that's and- what he was trying to affect. But to me, he looked a little contorted. And I'm wondering if his back problems, like apparently, you know, that thing where he like steps over the chairs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Apparently that was an affect that he came up with because he has a hard time sitting otherwise. Like that's actually a back problem issue for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was tall enough to do it. So he steps over the chairs, uh, which is, just became a part of his character, which I think is really funny. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I wonder if that's, that's the issue. I don't know. To me, he looked a little contorted and a little uncomfortable. Um, but also, uh, I thought the shots of Riker, and I think it's because that bridge, I don't think they built that bridge. I think they looked bad. Like, I thought they looked like kind of bad green screen. I didn't think they looked like green screen. I think they looked like Discovery. They looked like Discovery, a, a Discovery ship. That's exactly what it looked like. I agree. It did look like a Discovery, uh, like the, the, the vessel looked Discovery-ish, uh, but it looked it looked to me like Riker wasn't there. Hmm. He may not have been. Yeah, I may be wrong, but it just, I, I, the Riker stuff to me felt like weird. You know how like the fan films feel? Yeah. <laughs> like they, you can't even always put your finger on it, but they just, just don't feel Hollywood quality. That's kind of how I felt about all the Riker shots, which made me sad because I, lo- I, I love to see Riker in command and we just never really got to see him do that. So much so i wanted to see him yeah i think part of it also was those uniforms just look bad Mm. like the 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 new starfleet uniforms they look they look starched as hell they don't like fold they don't like bend uh you know with bodies so they look like they look like halloween costumes that have been hastily put together that's just what they look like and I talked about this before uh, when we did flashbacks and we see Picard and, and Raffi in their Starfleet uniforms and you've just got like a bundle of wrapped up like fabric in the back of their neck mm. where they're like their uniforms are just like hastily like Velcroed together or something. It just looks like absolute ass. Mm. And uh, I think those I think the uniforms look terrible. Um, uh, I was pretty disappointed with that. That's a um, bummer, and have been. Uh, even the um, even the TNG uniforms don't look like the TNG uniforms. Like they look like uh, they look like my grandmother got whatever fabric she could find and like you know put them together, and they just they don't look like the uniforms completely. They look they're like oh hey, it's the same style and everything. But the the fabric is wrong, and the way yeah. they sit on their bodies is wrong. It's very very stiff. Um, that's just a, it's a minor complaint. I feel like I shouldn't even. And by the way, the same thing for the Nemesis costume. Like it just looked bad. They all just looked bad. Hmm. Um, because they're like, you know what? We're not doing costumes. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna straight up do, you know, civilian clothing for the most part. And then when it came to costumes, like we gotta just you know cobble this shit together. Yeah. And that's what it looks like they did. Hmm. Uh speak speaking of uh the Nemesis uniform. Uh-huh. Uh, you get you get data at the very end, he lays down to die in his mm-hmm. little robe. Mm-hmm. And uh, I yeah, sorry. I'm I I'm like actually kind of mad about this whole data thing. Um but 
he, I guess, has a vision of P- younger Picard standing over, sitting over him at his bedside. <laughs> did you, did you catch that? It just looked like Picard to me. I didn't notice that he was younger. Or well, they never or show his face, and he's wearing his TNG uniform, and it look his hands look younger. Okay, that's like fair. I think it, I think he, it was. I did notice he was wearing a TNG uniform. Like, and he just looks thinner. He looks he looks he looks like he did in TNG, and I think and they never show his face. So I think it's just a different actor that like they picked a body mm-hmm. double for a younger Picard. If they're gonna have a data death, and you're gonna have him like um, I guess imagining because at this point Picard has left the simulation, so I guess he's why imagining. Not yes, why not Jordy? <laughs> why not Jordy? Why not Crusher? Why not the entire family? Like even if they all have to be silhouettes from behind, just like Picard. Even if you have to hire six actors who look lookalikes instead of one, do that because. In this moment, I know he just talked to Picard, but there's no reason for him to imagine... Like, this has been a gripe other people have had that I have not had. I think that him... um, Soji and Dodge believing that Picard was a righteous man who had helped them makes total sense. Mm -hmm. And having that ingrained in their personalities makes total sense Mm -hmm. to me. But... In the moment of Data's death, who would he imagine at his side? I think he'd imagine his entire family of the Enterprise crew. Um, and, and possibly imagine some of his family that he has gotten to know in his daughters and his children. Because mm-hmm. he talks about Soji's people in the simulation. So he apparently knows what's going on. So he's been in communication with all these people. Yeah. So it just it didn't make me make a lot of sense to me that he just pictured a younger Picard sitting there. Yeah, I felt like uh, I felt like some of the other people should have been there. Honestly, like I think that a simulation of them or something. Yeah, uh, give me Tasha. You know, oh give yes, me something. yes, Tasha. Give, give me Tasha. Give me Bruce. Give me uh, Bruce Maddox. Even like people that have been important to Data, like. Not just Picard, because he's the guy whose name is on the show. Like, I felt like the the final death of Data should have been about Data. Mm-hmm. And Data's entire life. And this felt like a weird, just like... Like, Data's just been spun up in this weird simulation world for 30 years, waiting on Picard, waiting on somebody to come around and turn, finally turn the switch off. Instead of, like, giving him any kind of agency or anything to do, uh, yeah. Or even to communicate anything really important to Picard. When, 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 um, this is also frustrating because this could have made it make sense. Uh, and I was, I was thinking this is where they were going. So Data tells him, Life is important, like death is an important part of life, and immortality can be a curse. Kind of, that's the whole conversation they have. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> then he leaves the thing and gets put into a golem. I thought for sure he was going to find out he was immortal, and that was going to be sort of the the monkey's paw moment. He just mm-hmm. talked to Data about how immortality is bad, and then he finds out he's immortal, and now he's going to have to grapple with that over the next few seasons, you know? Or he finds out that he doesn't have to die. Um, and instead, they put an old man, uh, what is it, 90-something? 90 92? Is that how old he is in the show, supposedly? 94. <laughs> they put a 94-year-old, they used a incredibly expensive piece of tech uh, I'm assuming because there's only one of them, and they seem like it's not going to be produced again. They 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 use this golem to put a 94 year old man and only give him a few more years to live. <laughs> well, I don't think that they. I don't think that they. They've created a lot of androids, so I don't think that they can not create another one. Like, yeah, no, I, 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 don't, I think I don't they think, can still do it so either, unless Maddox was necessary for the creation in some no, way. No, no, Soong said absolutely he was the body guy. Uh, Maddox was the guy who handled consciousness, consciousness transfer. And transfer. Got it. Okay. So yeah, there should be uh, androids aplenty coming from this. But uh, I think uh, what I like about about it is there is a steady theme uh, with Picard one sticking up for for synthetic life, 
Two, being partially synthetic himself since he got his heart, you know, cut through. Then he became Borg. Um, and he has, he still has implants, Borg implants that he'll never be able to get rid of. I like the idea that humanity is, uh, a construct of our own imaginations and that now Picard is literally all machine, but he still maintains his humanity. There's a poeticness, uh, 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 uh a poetic justice to all of that. Like the fact that when he was sticking up for data and measure of a man, he was fighting for his own future rights. Yeah. I like all of that. I I do too. I I'm totally with you on that. I just wish they'd done more with it. If that's going to be the, and I'm I'm sure they still have time to do more with it. Uh, And they did, they did tease it with him saying, you know, I, I, now the synth band or she says, now the synth bands lifted, I can travel. And he goes, me too. (laughs) Right. That was really cute. You know, and that's another TNG sin is, God, I wish they had done more with it. Like, how many times did you say that throughout TNG? Not as many times as you had said it during Voyager, but... Sure. Anyway, uh, we haven't Man. really talked about Elnor, because all he did was cry once, and that's about it. Um, he followed, you know, Jackass. He followed <laughs> Narek, which... Yeah, Narek and Elnor have very little to say about what their, their storylines in this episode. Um... I guess Narek is kind of our is he good, is he bad guy for the show as of now. Mm-hmm. He still tried to kill Soji, but he seemed regretful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he did, he was trying to, he was actually correct. He was trying to stop her from being the destroyer, and she did almost end up being the destroyer. <laughs> yeah. So he was kind of right all along. Yeah. I mean, I'm just glad Peyton List is dead. I mean, I guess we didn't technically see a body, but we saw her fall pretty far. Yeah, we saw her fall into a Borg cube. She's down there like half dead being assimilated. Yeah, which I thought she was already dead anyway because a bunch of XBs kind of got her, yeah. Dog powder, yeah. Which is zombie XBs dog powder last episode. I guess that was right before the crash. I guess maybe that got interrupted. (sighs) Ah, okay. They they just. You got to pick your battles. When you're telling a story with this big of a cast, you've got to pick what story you're going to tell with which episode. And I understand that finales are hard because they often are trying to wrap up a lot of things. But the sin that I feel like this this episode has is it just like introduces new things to wrap up on top of all of the things that it's going to try to wrap up with all these characters. And it really just feels like a rushed mess to me um again i do i I, any one of the things that happen there's almost nothing in here that happens that i wouldn't have minded that i wouldn't have minded if it had been handled differently like Mm -hmm. data's death the way he died it could have been fine if they'd done a few tweaks but instead it but they didn't instead they rushed through it and it's just like data's death i feel like could have been could have been a great episode great episode nine or something where they really focus on um yeah like how much more powerful this all have been if in episode nine or the end of episode eight picard dies and he gets uh, he gets inserted into that world and he spends all of episode nine talking to him and then the entire fight that he's having in the last episode, he is literally fighting for his own rights as an AI for the, like as an AI, he's approaching the, you know, Federation trying to get them to come, come to their aid, you know? Yeah. Uh, they, they just could have moved one or two of these pieces that they put, shoved into this last episode onto different episodes and could have made this story a lot more cohesive, but it just feels, feels cluttered said at the beginning. Cluttered is my word for this. Yep. Well, cluttered is is true, but anticlimactic is for me. It's just <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I I hear you. Um. All right. Well, you got anything else you want to say about this episode? I'm good for now. I'll, I'll come back when we when we do like a full season. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to do that. We're going to try uh, <laughs> probably next week or something. Do a do a full season wrap up and kind of talk about. The entirety of season one, we really kind of focused in on this last episode, and I really think this first season was super strong. Um, I don't think they stuck the landing, but like, 
there's a lot of good stuff here. So let's uh, let's get together in a few days, and uh, and once we have a little more time to process this, uh, yeah, man. and uh, and rewatch and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I look forward to it. Uh, you guys, thank you for hanging out. Um, by the way, I do want to let everybody know I've got the Kickstarter for the double album that I'm making based on Star Trek Picard and based on a bunch of Star Trek next generation episodes and movies uh that double album is um being kickstarted for to make some physical copies I had enough people reach out to me and ask me about physical copies that i uh just made made the kickstarter uh just in case of course that was before all this covid nonsense so uh <laughs> we're we're gonna i don't i don't know it, 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 if it doesn't fund it's okay but if you if you're one of those people who still has a job um and still out there working <laughs> Then, uh, right. you know, and you, you got a few dollars to throw at a guy who, who is just out here making Star Trek music that he loves to make. Uh, you can go to strandedpanda.com and uh, click on the music page and there's a banner right there. Uh, or you can just go to Kickstarter and search for a Star Trek fan making double album about Picard. Uh, Yeah. So that's that's there. And uh, since I actually put the song from this last week up super late, so I'm going to throw it again at this epi- at the end of this episode. Um, so this is uh, the 19th Star Trek song that I've written in just about as many weeks. So, whew, I am, I'm tired, Dave. I hear you, man. I'm I'm tired of you doing it too. <laughs> and uh, thanks, man. That <laughs> makes me feel good. Um, <laughs> no, man, they've been great. Thanks, brother. Uh, but no, yeah, this song is about um, Sutra, actually, um, and it's about her sort of villainy um, and and kind of I, it's the it's the classic. It's like the musical song. It's the classic villain song. You know, it's like her uh, turn heel turn as the like. You've been you've been stepping on me too long, and now I'm gonna do what I have to do to make, uh, to to make my way in this world. So, mm-hmm. hope you guys dig it. This one's called uh, what is this one called? <laughs> Fire from Heaven. Yeah, that's it. This one's called Fire uh, from Heaven. I thought it was gonna be Kama Sutra. <laughs> Kama. Yeah, just that actually is really funny. Just like the like an actual comma, not the word comma, but like comma right. sutra. That's, mm-hmm. real, that's real good. I like that. Um, all right, guys. Well, we'll be back soon. Jolan True. Live long and prosper. I guess you give me no choice. In this world you've built, there's no room for me. But I won't be brushed aside No, I'll bring you pain If necessary You think you've reason to fear So you've kept your boot on my neck For all this time But let me make something clear I only do this to protect me and mine Fire from heaven If you come for me Please know it's not my choice I just want to live But you've pushed this too far For me to take a seat I always knew this day would come I just hoped you'd give us a chance But I see that you won't So I am become death Destroyer of worlds It's easy to call yourself pure When it's you that decides you're not to embrace As worthy of life Your logic of sacrifice is nothing but taste You say seek out new life and new ways to live it Oh, but seek and destroy, that's all that I'm given So I'll 
rain fire from heaven If you come for me Please know it's not my choice I just want to live But you push this too far For me to take a seat I always knew this day would come I just hoped you'd give us a chance But I see that you won't So I am become death Destroyer of what you see Oh, you've built a proud society But hidden beneath this pretty story you tell We've had to scratch and claw our way out of hell I'll rain fire from heaven If you come for me Please know it's not my choice I just want to live But you've pushed this too far for me to take a seat I always knew this day would come I just hoped you'd give us a chance But I see that you won't So I am become death Destroyer of Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or Maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 